have four skull three and has a stroke back at just hand. We'd like to invite you to tune in to ESPN University the first part of May, May 4th, 5th, and 6th, because at that time we'll have a full-on hour of the highlights of the Copley Cup and Jessup Whittier Cup, all broadcast on ESPN University on May 4th, 5th, and 6th. Starting times are on your screen. Of course, you can check your local listings for start times in your area. Up next okay, is in lane four, you can now have four can stop and two keep going. Okay, now at this point two, just do it real light. Just keep doing it because you're gonna you're gonna have to do it again anyway. Okay, so just but nice and light. Just just there. Excellent. Sonoma crew, have your stern pair back. Just have your stern pair back right into the stake boat. You can use your legs. There you go. Okay. Okay, way enough. Okay, now have two skull bow. There you go. Lane assignments, event 84, women's Go. collegiate D1, Attention. D3, club, novice eight, Go. final, lane one, Sonoma State, lane two, Long Beach State, lane three, University of California, Santa Barbara, lane four, University of California, Davis, lane five is a scratch, lane six, UC San Diego, and in lane seven, Mills College. 100 meters into the race, University of California in San Diego is your early leader, Roaring in lane six. Black shell, white, excuse me, yellow blades. They have about a four seat advantage over the crew in lane one, Sonoma State. Once again, go through the racing start, make that shift down, get a more manageable stroke rate somewhere in the 32 to 36 stroke per minute range. Establish the rhythm. Try to work yourself ahead. And that's exactly what UC San Diego is doing now over here in lane six. UC San Diego is your race leader, followed by Sonoma State in lane one. Been a very tight battle for positions three, four, and five. University of California, San Diego, now almost one boat length advantage over the crew in lane one, Sonoma State. They do in fact have one boat length as we approach the 500 meter mark. UC San Diego is your leader. The second position goes to Sonoma State in lane one. And then it's UC Santa Barbara and UC Davis battling out for that third position, as well as Mills College. 
the race for third through fourth is a toss-up. But right now, with open water, it's University of California in San Diego. Charles, if you could comment just quickly on the placement of these crews when they move forward from their heats to the grand finals and the novice finals. Well, this event, Alan, is actually a straight final. Um, so these crews have not raced yet this, uh, this regatta. This is their first race. Uh, this is the novice race for Division 2, II, Division 3 and club programs. Uh, those are sort of NCAA designations, Division 2 and Division 3 and club also is... Uh, means that they're not varsity programs in their athletic department. And these crews have some early season form. Uh, in lane one, Sonoma State, they've beaten St. Mary's, Mills, uh, UC San Diego, and Cal Lightweights, but they've lost to UC Davis, Sacramento State, and Humboldt State. In lane two, Long Beach State have beaten UC Irvine, but lost to Orange Coast College and UC San Diego. In lane three, uh, UC Santa Barbara, they've beaten UC San Diego and uh, UC Irvine, but lost to UC Davis. In lane four, Davis, uh, they have uh, beaten UC Santa Barbara. And in lane six, UC San Diego, they have uh, beaten UC Irvine twice, Long Beach State and Cal Lightweight, uh, but lost to Sonoma State, uh, St. Mary's, Mills, uh, UC Santa Barbara, Sacramento State, Humboldt State, and Orange Coast College. However, having said all that with the results, uh, the truth is that we're with a lot of these novice crews. Uh, some are novices, true novices, some are freshmen, and uh, some are being moved up and down between the novice squad and the varsity squad in all these programs. So which boat is strong on which particular regatta day very much depends on uh, selection uh, decisions made by the coaches in each program. If the form holds true with what we've seen over the first thousand meters, this should be a great challenge for each of the coxswain in the leading crews, Sonoma State along the shoreline in the white shell and uh, University of California, San Diego in the gold jerseys uh, near side. Uh, to be able to keep an eye on each other across that many lanes is going to be tough to see who responds and when they take off. I'll make a comment about that if you would, Charles, and the thinking that they have when they're in that situation. Yes, it's always it's really very easy to uh, keep an eye on how a crew's doing immediately either side of you. It's much, much more difficult to keep an eye on what's happening on the far side of the race course. And it's an alert coxswain who is able to keep the awareness about them of where they are in the race course and which particular set of buoys they're going through and then be able to glance across the expanse of the race course to the far side and get some idea of whether at the same buoy line their competitors are in front of them, with them, slightly behind them and make tactical decisions based on that. Well, right now, the University of California, San Diego, looks like they have jumped up a little bit on the outside and may have the advantage over Sonoma State along the shoreline. Then outside to Davis, Long Beach. Let's check that to uh, Santa Barbara, then Long Beach. So on the far outside, that is the University of California, San Diego. In their shadow is Mills. And the Tritons from UC San Diego appear to have it in hand here at the moment at least. They are out there in lane number six and rowing along at a nice smooth clip and evenly. They were challenged early by Sonoma State along the shoreline, but that challenge apparently has disappeared. We have a microphone that is intermittent at the moment on the Davis coxswain, so we'll try to figure out what's going on there as she gets into it to help her crew try to move up. Well, the wind seems to have calmed down a little bit at this point. It isn't as strong as it was earlier. So certainly the crews seem to have dealt with that third 500 uh, quite handily. Uh, it's UC Davis, sorry, UC San Diego on the far side out in lane six. And the challenge will be coming from Sonoma State in lane one. This is the Davis coxswain, not quite as conversational as some of the earlier coxswain we've listened to, but let's catch what she has to say. Final 250, two buoys away. In 
and you see San Diego started their sprint. Uh, you can see that the uh, stroke rating went up markedly within the last few strokes. With the tide out as far as it is at the moment, conventional wisdom would be that lane one in the last 250 meters may not be quite as much of an advantage because being shallower there compared to the middle of the course, there might be more drag on the howl. University of California, San Diego, far out in front here. We're listening to the Davis Coxon trying to move her crew along. Sonoma State is along the shoreline. Then Long Beach State is trailing as well as Santa Barbara with Davis in the middle trying to fight off Mills College on the outside. This is University of California, San Diego. Sonoma State looking like they're going to finish one, two. Let's see how Davis does against Mills. Davis is near shoreside, Mills on the outside. As UC San Diego crosses the finish line, Sonoma State in second position. And the close race will be between Mills on the outside and Davis in the center. This is Davis finishing in the third position. They overtake Mills, but the winner in this heat was the University of California, San Diego in the novice final division club two and three. Eighty-five women's club final. Lane one, Mile High Rowing Club. Lane two, Marin Rowing Association. Three, San Diego Rowing Club. Four, Long Beach 